So it's, it's hard sometimes to tell what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. Let's look at this one. Carbon plus sulfur to, be, to form CS2. Well, we did the C plus O2 because it, the carbon was gaining oxygen. But what do we do with this one? Ah, we can't look at charges or anything. So it's hard to tell. So we use something called oxidation states to keep track of electrons. It's like bookkeeping for electrons. This is something that's completely made up. Okay, We just made it up so that we could tell what's going on. And the way we do this is we take all the shared electrons and we give them to the most electronegative element in the, in the compound. Okay, so that's the basis behind it. But how we're actually going to do it is we're going to just follow a set of rules. So the oxidation state, it's sometimes called the oxidation number, is, is going to be calculated for each element. Um, this is important. Don't confuse oxidation state with ionic charge. And the reason that you could confuse those is because a lot of times it's the same number, but they don't mean the same thing. I should have put a warning up about this lecture. Warning, confusion coming. Sorry. I went through these slides and I'm like, oh man, I gotta tell them about this. I think it's cool, but I'm pretty sure you're not gonna think it's cool. These are the rules. Um, I know, this seems like a lot of them. So if you have an element, like copper or chlorine, oxygen, any element just by itself, oxidation number zero. If you have a monatomic ion, like calcium ion or chloride ion, the oxidation state is the same as the charge. We know how to do the charges. The oxidation state is the same thing. If you have... Um, a neutral molecule, whether or, or a formula unit, all the oxidation st states have to add up to zero because the overall charge is zero, so the overall sum of oxidation states has to be zero. If it's an ion, then the charges add up to, I'm sorry, the oxidation states add up to whatever the charge is. So on NO3 minus, the oxidation states of nitrogen and oxygen have to add up to minus one. Um, in compounds, group one metals have an oxidation state of plus one, group two, plus two. Those are the predictable uh, um, metals from the periodic table. And so it's really number five that is the most confusing. The rest of these really just go along with ionic charges. So treat the oxidation state like it's an ionic charge, but just remember it's not the same thing. They happen to be the same number, but it's not the same thing. So here's, here's the rules. Um, this is basically a list, um, a priority list of who gets their way. That's how I think of it. Fluorine gets her way. She wants to be minus one. That's the charge she has as a monatomic ion. And in a compound, fluorine gets to be what she wants. She's first priority. And then hydrogen. Hydrogen wants to be plus one. So as long as fluorine isn't forcing her to be something else, hydrogen gets to be plus one. Next is oxygen, and then they go in order seven, six, five by group in the periodic table. The seven, six, five isn't too bad, but the FHO is a little bit hard to remember. Do you know what pho is? Really good noodle soup, right? Yeah, pho. Well, what if we just cut off the, the P a little bit? F-H-O. F-H-O. Pho, seven, six, five. Yeah, I don't know. E.T. phone home. Okay. Assign oxidation states. Here we have zinc, all by itself. It's an element. What's the oxidation state? Zero. Element, oxidation state is zero. Here we have a monatomic ion. 
it's going to be plus 2. The oxidation state will be the same as the charge. Here we have a compound. We have calcium chloride. Calcium gets to be plus 2. Remember, group 1 and group 2 metals, they always have the same charge. So they always have the same oxidation number. So the calcium has an oxidation number or oxidation state of plus 2. And we know that chlorine wants to be minus 1, but we have to make sure that that's going to work out. So if the chlorine is minus 1, and there's two of those, and the plus 2, yeah, that's going to work out. The charges, I'm sorry, the oxidation numbers will add up to 0, which is the charge on this formula unit. CF4. So we don't have any ions. We don't have an element. There's no metals. We just have these two nonmetals. Now we have to go with that priority list. Fa765. Yeah. So F comes first. What does fluorine want to be? Negative. Negative 1. So fluorine gets to be minus 1. So we have four negative ones, and then we have whatever the carbon is, I'll call that X. And what do those oxidation numbers have to add up to? Zero. So what's X then? Plus four. So the carbon in this situation is plus four. It's like some weird game that you really don't want to learn how to play, but sorry. It's in the course outline. NO2 minus. We got two nonmetals. So we're going to go with the, the FA765 list again. So uh, we don't have an H, but we have O. O gets to be what charge it takes as a monatomic ion. So we know that oxygen is, gets to be minus 2. So we have the charge on nitrogen, sorry, the oxidation number on nitrogen, and there's two oxygens, and they're both minus 2. And what does that have to add up to be? Minus 1, the charge on the ion. So this is x minus 4 equals minus 1. So what's x? Plus 3. So nitrogen is plus 3. SO3. Again, with the two nonmetals. P, I'm sorry, not P. FHO765. O, o gets to be first. O gets what it wants. O wants to be minus 2. So we have three oxygens, they're minus two, and we'll put here X for the sulfur, there's only one of them, and this adds up to zero because the charge on this is zero, it's a neutral molecule. So what's X? Plus six. Any questions? like trying to teach you to speak Latin in 45 minutes. It was just like, wow. By assigning oxidation states to the elements in a chemical equation, we can figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. Oxidation happens when you have an increase in the oxidation state Reduction is a decrease or a reduction in the oxidation state. The oxidation number goes up or it goes down. So here's carbon. What's the oxidation state for carbon? It's all by itself. It's an element. Zero. So carbon is zero. I'm trying to write with the eraser. It just never works, but I keep trying anyway. Sulfur, all by itself, what's its oxidation state? Zero. CS2. 
Well, we have carbon and we've got sulfur. F, no. H, no. O, no. 7, no. 6, oh, there we go. Sulfur's in group 6. So sulfur wants to be what? Negative 2. Because when sulfur's an ion all by itself, it takes a minus 2 charge. And so the oxidation number is going to end up being the same. So we have two of those. So that's minus 4, right? And this, plus whatever the state of carbon is, has to add up to 0. So the carbon must be plus 4. So this one's plus 4, and this one's minus 2. So carbon's oxidation state is going from 0 to plus 4. Is that increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Carbon is being oxidized. Sulfur's oxidation state is going from 0 to minus 2. That's a reduction in the oxidation state. It's reduction. Electrons are moving, but they're not actually being completely transferred to form ions. But carbon and sulfur do not share the electrons evenly. So in this compound, sulfur is hogging the electrons. And so that's why we say that the sulfur is reduced. It has essentially gained electrons, and the oxygen has lost them. It's like sharing covers with your spouse, blankets, you know? One person's always hogging them, right? It's not that you took them completely away off into another room, but they're just pulled over on your side of the bed. Use oxidation states to identify the element that's being oxidized and the element that's being reduced in the redox reaction. Well, oxidation states. Here we have tin all by itself. Its oxidation state is zero. We could go through and do all of these in order, and you're welcome to do that. I'm just going to look at tin and see what tin is, what's happening with tin over here. Here we have a tin oxide, right? This is an ionic compound, um, but tin isn't group one or two, so we can't just say, oh, it's plus one or plus two. We know that the sum of the oxidation numbers is going to add up to zero because this is a compound. Um, there's nothing said about tin in any of the earlier rules. So we're going to go to the nonmetal rules, and here's oxygen. Oxygen gets to be what it wants because there's nothing else to mess with it. It gets to be minus two. There are two oxygens. They each have a minus two oxidation state. That's a total of negative four, right? So then the tin has to be plus 4. So the oxidation state for tin has gone from 0 to plus 4. Is that oxidation or reduction? Oxidation is going up. The oxidation number goes up. When the oxidation number is reduced, that's reduction. You can also... You can also say, well, if these were the charges, and sometimes they are, if these were the charges, would this be loss of electrons or gain of electrons? And you can do it that way, too. But because it's losing electrons, the tin is being oxidized. And so then we've got these other guys. We've got hydrogen, and we've got nitrogen, and we've got oxygen. One of those has to be reduced. But it can be tricky to tell which one it is. So let's do oxidation numbers. So here we have hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. F, F, H, O. So H comes before O. What does hydrogen want to be? Plus 1. Next is oxygen. Oxygen wants to be minus 2, so it gets its way. And then we have to figure out what the nitrogen is. 
So we've got a hydrogen, and we've got nitrogen, we'll call it X, and we've got three, sorry, I need a plus sign, um, three negative twos, and what's that going to add up to? What's the charge on HNO3? Zero. HNO3, there's no charge here, right? I don't see a charge. So we have 1 plus x minus 6 equals 0. So x minus 5 equals 0. So x must be plus 5. So I'm going to write it up here because I didn't leave enough space. Let's go over here. Nitrogen and oxygen. So the oxygen gets priority. It gets to be what it wants. You get first choice oxygen. I want to be minus two. The nitrogen has to be what's left. There are two oxygens. So the total negative oxidation state is minus four. So the nitrogen has to be plus four. So just looking at the nitric acid and the NO2, did the oxidation state of oxygen change? It's minus 2 and minus 2. Nothing happened to oxygen. There's no hydrogen over here. But the nitrogen went from plus 5 to plus 4. Nitrogen's oxidation state was reduced. It went down. So the nitrogen is being reduced. There are situations where you can have more than one element being oxidized and more than one element being reduced. I won't give you those on a test. I won't, I promise. If we look at this one, we find that hydrogen is plus one and oxygen is minus two. And so the hydrogen and oxygen didn't change there either. Any questions? I know, right? Deep sigh. Now you're really just sad you came to class today. <laughs>